Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. Mr. President, my esteemed colleagues, ladies and gentlemen of the Senate, allow me to speak before you as a Senator of the Republic a final time. Mr. President, the Senate has given me a wealth of knowledge, experience, and wisdom that I could not have gained elsewhere, not even from being a Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, a position which I politely declined in 2012. Much of what and who I am now, I owe to the Senate. I have been Senate President four times, Senate President pro tempore, Majority Leader, and for the last six years, the Minority Leader. And it is here in the Senate where I have done my best and perhaps experienced my worst. Perhaps some will say that they will miss the position and everything that comes with being a Senator but not the work I, and on the other hand, live, love to work. I take pride in doing work that matters. The legacy that I wish to leave behind is written in between the lines of the laws that I have authored. And so most of you know of what I have done, the pieces of legislation that I am particularly proud of. For more than two decades, I did my share in the passage of measures whose impact would last beyond our lifetime. Among the laws I authored and sponsored were the Dual Citizenship Law, or the Dual Citizenship Retention and Reacquisition Act of 2003, which grants our nationals who have sought greener pastures abroad with the continued benefits and privileges of a Filipino. The SIN tax reform law contributes significant revenues to our country's universal health program, securing the welfare of indigent families and senior citizens. The GOCC Governance Act of 2011 promotes efficiency and fiscal discipline of government corporations. The amendments to the Public Service Act, the Retail Trade Liberalization Act, would vitalize our economy and improve the services to the public through foreign direct investments, relative to which I received from the economic managers of the present administration, led by Secretary Sani Dominguez, expressing their appreciation for our valuable contributions that led to the passage of this economic liberalization bill, including the Foreign Investment Act the Revised Corporation Code, which introduced significant changes to the legal framework for the establishment and operation of corporations. The Tax Incentive Management and Transparency Act, or the TIMTA Law, promotes fiscal accountability and transparency in granting tax incentives and served as a precursor to the CREATE Law. The amendments to the Revised Penal Code updated the eight-decade-old criminal statute while the Sandigan Bayan Law institutionalized structural changes to these important institutions of justice and accountability, and the law on the synchronization of elections in terms of office of ARMM officials harmonized local and national elections in compliance with our Constitution. Mr. President, the laws I mentioned composed the body of work that defined my life as a legislator. But you already know that about me. The rest of what I have done is a matter of record. Today, I would like to share a bit of my story. I am now often asked what advice I can give to the new senators. There is no, sh no short or one answer. What I can say and share are some lessons I have learned in the 24 years that I have been in the Senate. Early in my first term, I learned that getting elected to the Senate did not make me a senator. 
I had to labor hard to become worthy of the title. I had to earn my place in the House of 24 Republics through hard work, late nights, and early morning. When I joined the Senate back in the 10th Congress in 1995, I was confident that my 25 years of law practice and my nine years in the executive department as labor, justice, and executive secretary have made me more than able and ready for the Senate. So I thought, while my education and work experience served me well, the Senate was tougher than I expected. I had so much to learn. To see and hear on the floor an Ed Angara, a Neptali Gonzalez, an Ernie Macena, a Blas Ople, a Boy Herrera, a Raul Rocco, a Leti Shahani, who all have gone ahead of us, as well as a Juan Ponce Idrilli, a Bert Romolo, a Kit Tatted, and a Tito Soto was rather daunting. But it was also challenging and inspiring, Mr. President. And I knew that I must earn the respect before I can consider myself as their equal. Respect begets respect. Respect is earned, never imposed. And there was no better way to give respect to my peers and earn theirs than going to work every day well prepared. No bill was too small to be examined. I always prepared and studied because of my deep respect for the Senate, for the institution, for my peers, and the people who have placed me here. My dear friends, fate was relentless in surprising me with events that pushed me to make hard choices. In the four times and the eight years and seven months that I was Senate President, I had to lead this chamber and make hard choices during the most challenging times, such as the I accuse speech in 2001, in 2000, that led to the impeachment of then President Estrada. The deeply divided Senate of the 12th Congress from 2001 to 2004, punctuated by the rump session of, 20, of 2002, where then Senator and now Senate President Tito Soto and I were on opposing sides. The awkward mutiny in 2003 that allegedly involved a then member of the Senate and a future senator. If we had the shortest canvassing of votes for the president and vice president last week. I presided over the longest canvassing in 2004, which ended a mere eight days before June 30, and where I received so many text messages saying, do not proclaim the winning president you that you will become the acting president. <laughs> Those I all enjoy, I ignored because I was just concerned about the strength of our democracy and the good of our country. The low Garcia controversy and the ensuing Senate investigation on wiretap conversations in 2005. The executive legislative standoff brought about by EO 464 in 2005, which prompted the Senate versus Ermita case and the PDAF controversy, which greeted the 16th Congress in 2013. Our duty to the people includes the great and heavy responsibility of protecting the independence and integrity of the Senate as an institution of democracy. And so even as Senate President, I welcome with great pain the Blue Ribbon investigation on a project that I helped steer in my home city, not only to clear my name, but also to ensure that the public trust in the institution is maintained. It was a humbling, sobering decision which made me realize that the work done here is much, much larger 
than ourselves. My initiative in protecting the independence of the Senate led to the Supreme Court ruling in Senate versus Ermita that the appearance of executive officials in legislative inquiry is mandatory if such is pursuant to the Senate's power to conduct investigations in aid of legislation. Together with the present Senate leadership led by Senate President Tito Soto, we secured the landmark ruling in Pangilinan versus Cayetano, where the Supreme Court recognized that the power of the president in treaty abrogation is not absolute, but one that is shared by the Senate with the Senate of the Philippines. My dear colleagues, the Senate is said to be a chamber of sober second thought. With a national mandate, we are expected to think beyond the constituency of a sector or a district. We legislate not only based on present expediencies or leanings, but with a recognition that these laws will outlive us all. We have to lead our, lend our efforts towards strengthening our institutions, regardless of who is at the helm. And perhaps that, that is what shaped my stance on certain contentious measures deliberated in the Senate. I co-authored co and co-sponsored the Public Service Act, ably steered on the floor by Senator Poe, which allows critical services to be foreign owned. I have also come under scrutiny for my vote in the anti-terror law. Cognizant as I was of the need to protect civil liberties, I was also aware of the challenges encountered by law enforcement. And so in good faith, I attempted to strike a balance, placing on record what the law intends to achieve, introducing amendments to protect individual rights, while ensuring that collective security will be safeguarded. Mr. President, legislation is the art of the possible. The ability to build consensus is an important skill that a leader must have always firmly rooted in one's values and basic principles. And I would like to think that the emerging consensus of the Senate leader in the next Congress possess these qualities. Senator Mig Zubiri would have this skill of a leader that would enable this chamber to move forward and pass needed legislation. To lose, you, lose the, you lose the moment you think that the winner takes all in this chamber. The ability to tolerate and see merit in views different from one's own is valuable. This has allowed me to choose my battles well, coming up with reasonable and principled compromises were, were feasible but drawing the line when needed. It is this recognition that made me effective in my roles as Senate President, Majority Leader, and Minority Leader for the last six years. As a lawyer, I built my living on winning arguments. I am trained to make things difficult for my adversaries. But that is not the Majority Leader that I strive to be as my colleagues saw me in the last six years. I am not sure if that is how Senator Sobiri feels. <laughs> but in many instances, but in many instances, the records will show that I premised my statements and my arguments by an assertion that this is what the majority leader wants the minority leader to do. Hearing aside, being part of the minority or the opposition should always be anchored on public good and not on the urge to obstruct or to be proven right. There are 24 of us in this chamber, 24 independent republics, they say. Each of us received a mandate from the people. 
my dear colleagues, there is great value in listening. That is why early in my career as a senator, although I was never schooled, I allowed myself to be taught and mentored. To be elected into office requires highlighting one's achievements, self-promotion, if you will. But I never let that fool me into believing that public service is about me or my name. To date, I am the only Drillon who holds an elective position in government. I am fully aware that public service is not, is not something I can bequeath to my children or my relatives. It is both a responsibility and a privilege that is proactively chosen out of a deep sense of duty and desire to serve, not out of entitlement or a birthright. I never subscribe to the practice of filing bills for the sole purpose of being a prolific legislator by sheer volume of the bills filed. I chose to shepherd and associate myself with measures that I believed would bring much needed impact, impactful reforms. I owe my position to the people who have elected me into office. I owe it to them to promote, to produce quality bills and actually see them through. See them through. While I am proud to have been part of the large work that have already been done for the nation, I am humbled by the knowledge that there remains so much more to be accomplished by a generation of legislators that will no longer include myself. My dear colleagues, the work of democracy is never finished. The challenge is to do better, to be never complacent, to not be disillusioned by our imperfect democracy or be attracted by the tempting nation that we have too much of it, the, the tempting notion that we have too much of it. Democracy is the reason why we stand here today, all 24 independent republics, able to speak and disagree freely, able to do the duty we have been elected to fulfill. Let us never take it for granted. My fellow senators, I stand before you proud and honored to have worked with you in this esteemed institution. I cannot thank you enough for your trust and confidence. I am forever grateful to my colleagues, past and present, for electing me Senate President four times. It was truly an honor to lead this institution in the nearly nine of my 24 years as a senator. To the men and women of the Secretariat, thank you for your support. You have made our work easier. Your dedication and hard work are much appreciated. And I address this to the future Senate President, should be rewarded. One of the best decisions I ever made as Senate President was to institutionalize our employees' monetary and non-monetary benefits. To the Senate media, thank you for your fair, sometimes unfair, <laughs> coverage of our life and our work in public service. Thank you for asking tough but important questions. Just this afternoon, Mr. President, I was presented by the media with a gift with their well wishes written on it. And allow me to read a few from NIMFA Ravilo of BCWBC said, Marami kayong natulungan, marami kaming natutunan. From Mara Cepeda of Rappler, thank you for taking a stand on press freedom and for being a strong and steady figure in the opposition. There are more than a dozen, uh, uh, dozen well wishes but I, would, uh, I, I could not read all of them. But they are indeed embedded in my heart as I leave this institution. Since I assumed office 27 years ago, I have been very fortunate to have hardworking men and women who stood by me, who endured long hours beside me, and who put up with my demands for excellent work. To them, my profound gratitude. 
to my family, to my loving wife, Mila, my children, and my grandchildren. Thank you for your love, for your support, patience, and understanding. Mr. President, my dear colleagues, there is a time for everything, a time to work and a time to rest. And after being in public life for more than 35 years, I am stepping back to my private space to spend more time for myself and with my loved ones. What used to be packets of time carved out of my schedule for family will now be replaced by unlimited time at home. How time makes fools of us all. My dear colleagues and friends, it is my privilege and honor to have served you and our beloved nation for most of my life. I will not say that I will be back again. I am at that stage of man's life where one no longer has grand dreams for myself, only memories. And you all will be in my memory. I hope I can be in yours. Remember me fondly and kindly. And as the many great senators before me, it was immense, with immense gratitude and profound pride that the gentleman from Iloilo, for the last time, yields the floor. Thank you. God bless the president. Thank you. Session suspended.